A search for a fugitive led to six different arrests in Laurel County. A Kroger store in central Kentucky reopens less than 24 hours after its roof caught on fire. You'll hear from the store's manager. And police in Louisville are randomly giving away $10,000 this week, $50 at a time. This is WKYT News at 430. Good afternoon, Sam Dick and Amber Philpot reporting. Deputies looking for a man who violated his parole led to several different arrests and a baby being taken by social services. WKYT's Victor Puente talked to the sheriff about the bizarre case and the ongoing drug problem in the county. It's our top story at 430. Deputies say they came to this home looking for a man who had violated his parole. They ended up arresting five people here, all of them on charges related to meth. Laurel County Sheriff's deputies were searching for 53-year-old Timothy Fields when they came to this home on McWhirter Road. They say when they found him, he had 71 grams of crystal meth on him. The homeowner, 52-year-old Billy Fouts, was also arrested after a struggle. Police say he also had meth and a warrant out for his arrest. Two women at the home, 34-year-old Joyce Nance and 23-year-old Tiffany Johnson, were also arrested and charged with possession. Police found Johnson's six-month-old son in the home, so she's also been charged with wanton endangerment. They say while they were making those arrests, 50-year-old Johnny Turner came to the home, and they found Xanax, oxycodone, and a glass pipe on him. Finally, as the group was being booked, they allowed Tiffany Johnson to call her mother to come get her son. They say when she arrived, she appeared under the influence and admitted to having six beers before driving to the sheriff's department. 58-year-old Donna Johnson was charged with DUI and careless driving. We've solved some problems out in that community uh, as far as probably thefts and, and drug trafficking by putting these people in jail. All six people who were arrested are due in court tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. for their arraignments. In Laurel County, Victor Puente, WKYT. After Donna Johnson was arrested, social services took over placement of her grandson. A Franklin County Kroger store has reopened after a fire temporarily shut it down. Some of our viewers captured this video of the flames on the roof of the Kroger on Brighton Park Boulevard in Frankfurt yesterday afternoon. Firefighters say the fire started on the roof over the pharmacy. Investigators say they do not know what caused the fire, but they tell us the building was undergoing some renovations when the fire began. The Kroger manager says he's very proud of his staff for how they handled the situation. Everyone did a great job. Uh, everyone pulled together. We got the customers out very quickly in an orderly fashion. And then when it came time to get back in the store and get us ready to open, everybody pulled together once again. The pharmacy will be closed for several days because it will basically need to be rebuilt. Kroger officials say anyone needing prescriptions can use the other Frankfurt store in the Franklin Square Shopping Center. A man accused of stabbing a woman is in jail this afternoon. William Perkins has been charged with a number of crimes, including assault. His girlfriend told police that Perkins punched her as she was falling asleep, then stabbed her as she tried to leave their apartment on Fairmont Court yesterday morning. It has been a calm day here in the bluegrass with a mix of sun and clouds and temperatures in the 50s for us. Pretty pleasant, really, but uh, don't get used to it because big changes are on the way. Let's check in with our chief meteorologist, Chris Bailey. Hey, Chris. Hey, guys. Initially, those temperatures are going to go up, and we have a good-looking Wednesday in store for the area. But remember the old saying, what goes up must come down, and that's appropriate this week. With your back porch thermometer, that'll take a big tumble. Later in the week, right now, we go from 47 Covington to 63 into Harlan and down into parts of Bell County, the Middlesboro area, sandwiched in between that I-64 corridor where 52 degrees is very popular as of now. Cloud cover doing the trick into northern Kentucky to keep those thermometers in the 40s. Southern Kentucky, we've got readings in the 60s. Most areas, though, will drop quickly into the 40s and kind of put the brakes on with a little nip in the air this evening. Overall, can't really complain, though, about 40s in the evening this time of year. Hey, you're looking for winter time, at least as some of us are. Well, we got a taste of it. By the time we roll into late this week, that storm system that's out across the Rockies now with cold air coming in behind it will actually be able to make it into parts of central and eastern Kentucky. We'll let you know what that means for the evening commute, and I can back as well in just a few minutes.
Thank you, Chris. Nine Republican presidential hopefuls are returning to the debate stage in Nevada for their last primetime showdown of this year. But with Donald Trump appearing to trail Texas Senator Ted Cruz in Iowa, tonight's debate could be key to the GOP race. Danielle Nottingham is in Las Vegas where she has a preview of the debate. Donald Trump slammed his Republican rivals at a packed rally in Las Vegas less than 24 hours before the last GOP debate of the year. This country needs to get away from political correctness. It's killing us. It's killing us. During tonight's debate, the real estate mogul will again be center stage with Texas Senator Ted Cruz and Ben Carson to his left and right. Trump is maintaining a solid lead in most of the national polls, but two of three recent polls show Cruz beating Trump in Iowa less than two months before the caucuses. Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio have emerged as the two most likely contenders. But political scientist Dan Schnur says GOP leaders see Cruz as a threat. Because his conservatism is so far outside the political mainstream, it can cost the Republican Party just as dearly in a general election as a Trump or Carson nomination could. The event here at the Venetian Hotel in Las Vegas is the first debate since Trump called for a ban on Muslims entering the U.S. following recent terror attacks. Standing on a debate stage next to Trump and calling him out on this, that's what people look for in their leaders. We'll see who has the courage to stand up. National security and terrorism are expected to be among the main debate topics. The four candidates trailing in the polls will go head to head in an earlier forum. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, Las Vegas. The Washington Post reported that members of the GOP establishment are considering ways to sidestep a possible Trump nomination. Trump and Carson have hinted at a run as independents. If that plan is true, the Iowa caucus is February 1st. When a police officer hands you a piece of paper, it is likely to be a ticket or citation. This week in Louisville, that piece of paper might turn out to be a $50 bill. If you're lucky, mm -hmm. Julian Glover followed some officers around who were giving away a little green. Can't think of a better way to start off your week. Monday morning, 5 a.m., and you get $50 for walking into work early. That was awesome. <laughs> it, does it put you in the Christmas spirit, the holiday yeah. spirit? Yes, it does, definitely. For the next four days, we're going to randomly just find people out and so give them $50 from the local Metro Police Department. Oh, thank you very much. I saw you checking it out to see if it was real at first. You did. <laughs> God was just like, at the right place at the right time, I'm coming out of work. <laughs> so we just want to give you $50. Bucks. Seriously? Yeah. It definitely helps to fill up the tank, huh? It definitely does. A, a good Christmas present will definitely help out. The officers do shop with the cop every year, and hundreds of kids benefit from that. The one thing we wanted to be able to do is make a difference in the lives of other individuals just randomly Thank you. by uh, giving them $50. I'm on my way to work. Ain't that something? What does that mean to you? Good morning. A lot. I know it's a lot. Especially feels hey, nice uh, today. You to be able to help these people, and it brings joy to their lives, which brings joy to ours. God bless you all through the season, too, man. Thank you. Tis the season of giving. A Louisville Metro Police Foundation is giving away $10,000 it raised through donations from its foundation board. Volunteers are getting ready for the 20th year of the Faith and Community Christmas Store. Organizers say the store is set up for families that are in need during the holiday season. Beginning tomorrow morning at 8, tickets will be distributed at Southland Christian Church on Richmond Road. The store will continue until Friday, but volunteers say the need is great, and they are asking for help from the community. UK has received a gift from the Confucius Institute headquarters totaling $1.7 million. The Confucius Institute is a partnership between China and 500 global universities. The plan includes strengthening of Chinese studies across campus, expanded teaching and research in China for faculty, and opportunities for students to study abroad. It's a classic Christmas story centering around second chances, a Christmas carol. And you can catch a live performance right here in Lexington this weekend on the University of Kentucky campus. Deanne Stevens is out and about with a preview. Hello, Deanne. Good afternoon, guys. We are preparing for a Christmas carol. Things taking off this coming Friday. Uh, rehearsals have been underway for months now, all put together by the Rep Theater. Robin Peterman Zahn is with us. And, Robin, you guys put together some fabulous local talent for these shows. We do. We have, extraordinary, we have about 90 people in the show singers, dancers, actors. Um, our Scrooge 
moved here the day before auditions and showed up. Thank goodness. Oh yeah, Incredible. he's absolutely amazing. Um, and it's a beautiful production. It's all all local talent, tremendously talented people. Beautiful show about family, love, second chances, singing, dancing. It's full of song and dance. Diana, you guys have dancers oh, here yeah. in is part of the production. Talk a bit about what they do in the show. We have 65 dancers, I believe, in the ensemble. They are in the scenes of each of the ghosts, Christmas past, Christmas present, Christmas future. I'm not going to let out the surprises because there are some real extravaganza numbers that would they're likened to Radio City Music Hall members. Wow, great show for the family it too. Is. Good, good way to kick off the holidays. Maybe going into the week of Christmas. It is in, in all the craziness. I think it would be awesome for people to come play with us for two hours and um, and feel great. Feel right. great. How do folks get tickets? I'm going to pass that to Diana. <laughs> okay, you can get tickets by calling the Singletary box office. You can. Uh, go online for Singletary Center to get tickets. Or if you want to email one of us, if you're having trouble that way, we can help you. Robin said, don't email me. Just show <laughs> up to the me. show. Show up. Show up. Show That's show all up. they care. Yes. They've been working yes. so hard on this show. Come on out this weekend and support them happening here at the Guignol Theater on UK's campus. I'm Deanne Stevens, out and about preparing for a Christmas carol. Back to you guys. That is a true classic, and that mm -hmm. is a huge cast of people, it seems. Oh, yeah. In there. A great venue. Great. Yeah. If you've never been to the Singletary Center, great place to see a show. Go see it. The nationwide opening of the most anticipated movie of the year is just days away. Star Wars The Force Awakens has shattered pre sale ticket records. And last night, the biggest stars in the galaxy saw the world premiere in Hollywood. They gave the film an enthusiastic thumbs up. Ben Tracy reports from LA on all the excitement. Even if you're not a fan, it's been impossible to escape the force that is Star Wars. For diehard fans, it's a religious experience. And even for casual moviegoers, this is the Star Wars they've been looking for. I'm a Star Wars fan, so I feel like we're paying homage to a film that I really respect, so I feel good. The latest chapter features a stable of fresh faces. Some familiar ones too. We're home. Listen, these kids have it so together. I'm out and thinking of asking them for advice. And JJ is a director that I really admire, have for a long, long time. I was pleased to be back. Anticipation for this movie is out of this world. The premiere here in Hollywood was so massive they shut down four city blocks. The Oscars is done on this very same street, and they only shut down one. Not bad for a film franchise that many worried about when creator George Lucas sold it to Disney. Disney paid Lucas $4 billion and then gave the keys to their newest toy to director J.J. Abrams. This is obviously uh, as surreal as it gets and I couldn't feel more honored or more lucky to be here and, and be part of this. I'll show them the dark side. Disney is hoping a massive box office performance is part of this, too. The Hollywood Reporter says The Force Awakens is being released on a record number of screens, more than 4,100, and the movie has already brought in more than $50 million in pre sale tickets. Industry experts estimate it could rake in $220 million on opening weekend. Putting The Force Awakens in a galaxy of its own. Ben Tracy, Los Angeles. All right, there you go. Adele saying hello to North America from the concert stage for the first time in five years. The Grammy winner has announced she will make a coast to coast concert trek for the first time in five years with shows in the U.S., Canada, and Mexico. And that includes six nights at both the Staples Center in L.A. and New York's Madison Square Garden. She'll do three nights in Chicago, July 10th, 11th, and 13th, and two nights in Nashville, October 15th and 16th. Tickets go on sale this Thursday.